Hey, I got so drunk last night, I walked across the dance floor and I won first prize in the dance contest. Ha ha ha, just share it with you. Congress in the United States of America, they're again talking about short-term loans and they're saying money marts and all these kinds of places are bad. And they want to give all the business back to the mob, right? Where you uh, pay with your broken legs and all that kind of stuff. And they just keep on. I wonder why they do that. I mean, just leave it alone. People are going to borrow money anyway. And so you lower the interest rate, and particularly if it's a two-week thing, which many people do from payday loans, right? It turns out that the guys don't make any money if you cap it at 15 or 16 or 18 percent, and it's only over a two-week period. It's hardly worth the time to write it up, right? And then again, they're interfering. Leave it alone in India. You have a population of 1.4 billion humanoids. They also have the Westminster-style parliamentary system. I say also because Canada has that pretty much as well. Although India does have some differences, they actually have an electoral college, which Canada desperately needs because by the time everybody's finished voting in Toronto, in the GTA, greater Toronto area, nobody else in the whole country needs to bother, pretty much. So that is kind of a big difference. The two are so-called, uh, they have two so-called houses as well, one with 245 members and one with 545 members. And again, they have about a billion and a half people. That's a lot of humans. Canada, as an example, I think is 36 million or whatever it is, right? And uh, in India, I'm bouncing back and forth. Keep up with me, you'll be okay. In India, everyone's elected except for two, two people. Those two are nominated by the president from the uh, Anglo group of uh, Indians. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. They have a total of 790 politicians. Canada, 38 million have written here, not 36, strike that. They have 443 politicians. You know, and if you compare it deeper, uh, you go into the U.S. and other places, Canada is, is just over-governed. I over, over governed. They should get rid of at least 100 seats, which would be 100 members of parliament. And then you get into the uh, provincial places and so on. I mean, there's far too many people that think they're in charge and all they do is have meetings to decide when the next meeting is. It's kind of bizarre. Now you have, um, political socialist people, right? They're like junkies. I, I mean, they really are. Things don't work. Your life is a disaster. You sober up, but then you keep trying it again. And when you sober up, you did it because somebody gave you money. Somebody who works. Think of a drug dealer. Think of a drunk. Think of a communist, a socialist. I mean, they can only get better if you get better. You be a capitalist and give them money. I mean, that's just not a very nice thing. I mean, um, there's a lot of history about socialism. It doesn't work. It's never worked, and they keep on keeping on. You need to have a leader. Now I am talking about Canada. You need a leader that uh, uh, has no special interests, okay? For example, if an Indian political person is leading a certain portfolio, let alone a country, their focus is the Indian people. If you have a homosexual, his focus is gay pride parades and gender bathrooms and homosexuality and so on. And, and that's not good. I mean, it's bad. You need somebody, I don't care if you're an Indian, I don't care if you're homosexual, but we don't, we shouldn't care. <laughs> we, we shouldn't even know. I mean, we need somebody who doesn't have special interest things going on all the time. And Canada has that. An assault weapon. Moving, moving, an assault weapon, now we're going over to guns, is made up, uh, it's a made up term for guns that are big, black, and scary. I mean, that's an assault weapon, right? And what makes that an assault weapon? Well, just politicians, because it just ain't true. There is no such thing as an assault weapon. Okay, now we have a guy, Peter McKay, in Canada. He's running for the leadership of the Conservative Party. He starts off, when I founded this party with Stephen Harper, we united based on a shared vision. Well, firstly, you should probably keep that to yourself. The world has moved on. You haven't, clearly. I mean, almost 70% of all Canadians never voted for the party that you and Harper founded, ever. And the Conservative is a Conservative, Mr. McKay goes on to say, and we need to unite so we can win again. If you unite with the people who were united, <laughs> you may win the government because the, the left is badly split. There's three, maybe four parties on the left. So you may win the government, but you haven't won the people. I mean, almost 70% of people that I've already mentioned, you still lost them. You can still rule the country, but the people don't like you. I mean, you have to come up with something new, something bold, certainly something different. Term limits, different things. Give us things. 
but you don't. You talk the same all the time. And it always comes down to the same thing. Election day, you're voting against someone. You're voting for the prettiest girl in the room. And, and, and uh, that's it. It's not very nice. Y'all were thinking it, and I just say it. <laughs> that would be right edition. So y'all come back, and we'll have more for you from the right. See ya.